Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma bada habita fillah I wanted to as briefly as I can discuss talk about the importance of following the minhaj of the salaf and avoiding ahl bid'ah and why we do not call ourselves ashari or diobandi and why those paths are away from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that we have to be just whenever we criticize someone whenever we praise someone whenever we deal with people as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has commanded us and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has commanded us and hold on all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded what? That the Ummah of Muhammad be one. And that we hold on to what? That we hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Mufassireen, the people of Tafsir, they refer to the Hablillah, which we are supposed to all adhere to as Muslims, to the Quran. And some refer to the Sunnah, and some refer to Islam in general and of course Islam is the book of Allah and the son of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so those various viewpoints of the Mufassireen are known what is called ikhtilaf tanawa and not ikhtilaf tabad ikhtilaf tanawa is meaning when you have gradations of differences meaning that basically you're saying the same thing or one can be uh, inclusive, uh, one terminology can be inclusive of another. But ikhtilaf tabad is when there are two po opposing uh, understandings, that they're totally the opposite. And this would probably be more likely to describe uh, the differences between the Ashadis and Maturidiya and the Diobandis uh, compared to Ahl Sunnah, that they have a view which differs with us in Aqidah. We're not talking about issues of fiqh because we generally all refer to the same great Imams, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam uh, Shafi'i, with Imam uh, Malik, with Imam Ahmed, and not in that order. But those are all our great Imams, the four Madahim and the Salafiyun are first and foremost to refer back to those great Imams as they are the great Imams of the Sunnah who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved the religion and preserved the fiqh and the madahib, uh, the understandings of fiqh through those great men who did not practice taqlid and ta'asib themselves. And so getting back to the ayat that we're told to hold on to this rope, the book in the, book in the sunnah, which is the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, he, this ayat, he, there's both ithbat uh, wa nafi. There's both an affirmation, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms and he commands us to hold on to the rope of Allah. And there is nafi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates that we should divide. And that means that we have to understand the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with how the greatest of the Ummah understood and that doesn't mean Imam Abu Hassan al-Ashari and that doesn't mean uh, Abu Mansur al-Maturidi and that does not mean uh, whoever is the leader of the uh, Diobandi sect but rather this means going back to the Sahaba the Ras of the Salaf the head of the Salaf as -Sali, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een and the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions uh, in, in his praise of the Sahaba Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says referring to the Mahajirin and the Ansar and those who follow them in righteous in righteousness and Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so those are the characteristics of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and that is a reference Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising the Sahaba and if you're praised in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that shows that your great status 
and stature. And so that's why we then need to move on some of the, to some of the evidences from the son of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so we can make clear that the Salaf al Sadeh and the path of the Salaf is the path of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and it's the path of Ahl Hadith and it's the path of Ahl Athar and it's the path of the Salafiyun or the Salafis as we refer to ourselves be it in Allah Ta'ala in more contemporary times. So we have to establish this. We can't just make a false claim. As the scholars mention, al-ibra bi haqaiq li bi musamiyat, that the reality of something is in uh, its substance, not in its claim. So the Ashiris claim to be Ahl Sunnah. The Diyubanis claim to be Ahl Sunnah. The Maturidiyah claim to be Ahl Sunnah. But it's not sufficient to have a claim. Your Aqidah, your manners, your fiqh, all of your aspects of understanding the deen, your menhaj, methodology of calling in da'wah must be in accordance with the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions fi kitabihi al-kareem Ya ayu al-ladhina amanu ati'u allaha wa ati'u rasul wa awli al-amri minkum fa inta naza'tum fi shayin furuduhu ila allahi wa rasuli in kuntum tu'minun billahi wal yawm al-akhir thalikum khayrun wa ahsanun ta'wila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabihi al-kareem O you who believe obey Allah and obey the messenger didn't say they obey the Tariqa Neobandi or Diobandi or, or uh, Naqshabandi or obey this one or obey that one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded in the Emir Yufid al Wujub, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands something, it is uh, that command, the asal or the origin of that command is that's an obligation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Yuladina Amanu, He commands who? The believers. Atiullah wa Ati Rasul, obey Allah and obey the Messenger. And the leaders are those who are in charge and authority over you. And if you disagree over something, if you have a dispute, then return it to Allah and His Messenger. That is, if you believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment, that is the best, uh, that's better for you. And that is the best uh, determination. So that lets us know, Habitifillah, that when we have a dispute between groups and between individuals and between sects, we have to return those disputes back to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and with the understanding of the Madhab of the Salaf. And that is Ahkam wa Aslam. That is uh, more knowledge based and with wisdom and it is safer for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitabi al-kareem, wa inna hadhihi ummatukum ummatin wahidin, wa anna rabbukum fattakoon, fattakatta'u amaruhum baynuhum zubaran, kullu hizbi ma'al zubaran, kullu hizbi ma'al ladayhim farihoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitabi al-kareem, and verily, uh, your ummah, your nation is one nation. And I am your Lord, so fear me. And taqwa, what is taqwa? That is adhering to the commands of Allah and avoiding His prohibitions. But instead, they divided the affairs between them. They divided, they split. Every hizb. So this is where hizbiya comes from. This is where the evils of innovation and new understandings of creed comes in and new manahij, new various methodologies which have no place or no origin from the book of Allah or the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but rather they come from a place for example Diyoband in India or they come from an individual for example Abu Hassan uh, uh, Al-Ashari, instead of going back to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. فَتَقَتُوا أَمَرْهُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ زُبْرًا زُبْرًا كُلُّ حِزْبِ مَا لَدَيْهِمْ فَرِحُونَ In every hizb, every group, 
rejoices within itself. And if you look at the Hizbi, if you look at the sectarianism, the Ma'tazilat, they rejoice. Those that are left with something of that uh, Aqidah. And those who are affected by the Jahmiyyah, they rejoice. The Khawarij, they rejoice. The Takfiris, they rejoice. The Ashiris, they rejoice. The Diobandis, they, they rejoice. The Naqshbandis, they rejoice. They rejoice in what they have. They pat each other in the back and rejoice in bid'ah, in innovation in the religion. And in the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, qalat, sabi'atu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yaqool, man ahtada fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fuhurad, wa fi ruwaitin li muslim man amana amana laysa alayhi amruna fuhurad. So Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the mother of the believers, she said, I heard the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected. And in another narration, whoever men, men, men amila amalin, and whoever does a deed which is not from our affairs, meaning not from Islam, they will have it rejected. So bid'ah is rejected. So those things from bid'ah that the Naqshbandis, the Diobandis, and the Ashadis have, which is not from Islam, are rejected. Those things which are from Islam, they will be in accordance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's judgment. If they did it properly, with ikhlas, and according to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was muwafaqa, then they will be accepted by Allah. So we can't judge the deeds of anyone, we can judge only the bid'ah. We can only judge the bid'ah. And we see that the creed of Ahlul Sunnah is superior and it goes back to that which was revealed by Allah and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And a beautiful statement of our Shaykh, Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi, Allah Yarhamahu, a great muhaddith of Yemen, he said, He said, Dawah to Ahlul Sunnah, Dawah to Min Kitabilah ila Kitabilah. وَمِنْ سُنَّةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِلَى سُنَّةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ So the Shaykh said that the Dawah to Ahlul Sunnah, and this is the Salafi Minhaj, is from the Book of Allah, it's from the Qur'an. To the Qur'an, it's not to about individuals and personalities, not about you, not about I, not about even our scholars, not about the great four Imams. So that's why we're not called, we don't call ourselves Hanafis or Hanbalis or, you know, as far as, as far as our uh, total understanding of Islam or how we practice Islam or Ta'asim, we call ourselves Muslims, we call ourselves from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, from Ahl Athar, from Ahl Hadith, from f followers of the, the Salafi Minhaj. But we don't say that we're from a place where Dio Bundy. We don't say we're uh, part of a sect of a particular individual, Ashadis, but rather we go back to that source. And in the second part of what the Sheikh said, he said, Women Sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meaning we call from the Sunnah, we call from the book in the Sunnah, to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we, that, that's what we're calling to. We're calling to Allah. That's what the Tao is about. It's not about individuals. It's not about blind following. It's not about ta'asab that you have to take the goal of a certain madhab and follow it in everything, even if it goes against the dalil, even if what is inherent in that particular issue is a mistake in accordance either with the Quran or in accordance with the authentic sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's not about ta'asab, but rather it's about following uh, the book in the Sunnah. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Men ragiba an sunnati falaysa minni. Whoever desires other than my Sunnah is not from me. It's not from my ummah, not meaning that they are disbelievers, but yet if they are not following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or they have deviated in the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it depends on the level of deviation, and it depends on the level 
of is someone totally denying the sunnah or are they just believing certain ahadith are unauthentic or whatever the case may be. So we love people in accordance with their obedience. Ahl sunnah has different levels. The scholars are on a different level than the laypersons. And Ahl bid'ah tafawit. They have different levels. Some people are closer to the Sunnah. We say the Ashiris are closer than the Maturidiyas and, and other groups in general to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They're closer in their Aqidah. It's just their Ta'wil of Sifat of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, of certain Sifat uh, of Allah Tabaraka Wa Ta'ala that they don't accept the way the Salaf of Sari, uh, understood those in the Sus and the way the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam articulated the Nusus and we'll get into those details much later. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, اتقوا الله وعليكم بسمع وطاع وإن عبد هبشين وإنه من يعيش منكم بعد في زيارة اختلاف كثيرة فعليكم بسنتي وسنة خلفاء خلفاء من بعد الراشدين المهديين عذوا عليها بالنواجذ وإياكم محتثين الأمور فإن كل بعدة ضلالة The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said hear and obey he said fear Allah and it is upon you to hear and obey the leader even if he was an Ethiopian slave and verily, those who live after me will see many differences. They will find many differences. And then he gave the prescription. So he said, So it's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khulafa Rashidin. Badi. Al Mahdiin. bin Nawajid. Hold on to it with your molar teeth. And beware newly invented matters, for every newly invented matter is astray. So how is it that a, 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 a creed and a movement that started in 1867, basically, for example, the Diobundis in Diobund in India, how is that not a newly invented matter? And how can they, Yantesa bin Asalaf, how? How can they say they are adhering to what the Salaf, but the way they understand Aqidah is different than the way the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in dealt with the Nasus? And different from the first three generations, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Khayran nas qarni thumma ladhin yirunum thumma ladhin yirunum. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best people is my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in a beautiful hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Can a Nas and this is the hadith of Hudayfa Can a Nas yes aluna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam an al khair وَكُنْتُ أَسْأَلَهُ عَنَ الشَّرْ مُخَافِتًا أَنْ يُدْرِكَنِي This is the hadith of uh, Hudayfa bin Yaman and he said the people used to ask the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa about good and I used to ask him about evil out of fear that I might fall into it فَقُلْتُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ كُنَّ فِي جَاهِلِيَةِ وَالشَّرْ فَجَاءَنَا اللَّهُ بِهَذَا الْخَيْرِ فَهَلْ بَعْدَ هَذَا الْخَيْرِ مِنَ الشَّرْ he said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, verily we were in the times of Jahiliyyah, meaning the time, the days of ignorance, when they weren't Muslims. Washar, and that was e and there was great evil had was widespread. And then Allah came with this khair, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them khair, granted them hidayah to Islam. A and after so after this good, will there be evil? The Prophet said, Naam. Uh, so then he asked, and after that, Shar, uh, will there be good? The Prophet ﷺ said, yes. And after that, and then he said, and after that evil, uh, and after that evil, will there be good? The Prophet ﷺ said, yes. And there will be Dukhun. And he said, Wama Dukhnuhu. And what is Dukhnuhu, Ya Rasulullah? Qal Qawm Yahtaduna bi ghayri hadi. He said they are people who guide without guidance. 
you will know them. Uh, you and, and you you will uh, you you will deny them. For kultu kultu hal bada thalak khair min ashar after this good hal bada had a khair min ashar after this uh, good will there be shar. So meaning you will know those people. You will know those people of bid'ah. You will see that they're not guided. Qal na'am. So after that goodness, there will be sharp again. Qal na'am. Du'atun ala abwaaba jahannam. Men ajabuhum ilayhim. Alayha. Fadhuku. Fadhukuhu fiha. He said, yes. There will be du'at on the abwaaba jahannam. There will be du'at callers to the gates of the hellfire. And those people who answer them, they will fall into it. This is why we have to be careful on what we follow. We have to adhere to the book of Allah and the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the sabil al-mu'mineen, the way of the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala the way of the salaf al and how they understood aqidah, and that they understood aqidah and the nasus by the zahir and nasus. They didn't make taqdeem or preference to their intellect to judge the text. For example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ar-Rahman ala ar we say, Ahl Sunnah says Ar-Rahman ala ar we say the same. And we don't make ta'wil, we don't change the al we don't change the meaning of it, nor would he change the, the actual textual uh, content of it. But rather we make taslim li nasus. But the Ashuris will say, no, it means um, istola, it means taking the, th the throne by uh, power. Or it means such and such, or it means such and such. They explain it away with no salaf from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah to precede them who explain those texts based on the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as he left it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Sahaba, they made Taslim li Nasus and the Salaf al Salih. The Prophet وسلم, explained that the Ummah would divide. So this was from prophecy of the Messenger of Allah وسلم. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم افترقت اليهود على إثنتين وسبعين فرقة وافترقت النصارى على إثنتين وسبعين فرقة وستفترق هذه أمة على ثلاثة وسبعين فرقة كلها في النار الوائدة كلنا من يهيا يا رسول الله قال من كان على مثل ما كان عليه وأصحابي اليوم كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the Jews will break into seventy one sects, Christians seventy two sects, my ummah into seventy three sects. All of them in the fire except one. They said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon what I'm upon and my companions. Letting us know that there would be uh, 72 sects of the Muslims in the fire. And the scholars differ, but the most sound opinion is that those 72 sects that are in the fire are not... They're not disbelievers. They don't have bid'ah mukafara because there's two types of bid'ah. There's bid'ah mukafara, which takes you out of the fold of Islam, and there's bid'ah ghayra mukafara. There's bid'ah, which is an innovation in the religion, a major sin, but it doesn't take you out of the fold of Islam. And this is what you'll find with a lot of those groups that they have some, uh, perhaps, bid'ah ghayra mukafara, that they're Muslim. They're your Muslim brothers and sisters, but they have this bid'ah, and they call to bid'ah. And they understand the religion in a way that was uh, not known and not coming from the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. عن عبد الله بن مسعود radiyallahu ta'ala anhum قال خط لنا رسول الله sallallahu alayhi wa sallam خط ثم قال هذا سبيل الله ثم خط خطوط عن يمينه وعن شماله ثم قال هذه سبب فتفرق متفرقة على كل سبيل منها شيطان يدعو إليه ثم قرأ وأن هذا صراطي مستقيم فاتبعوه ولا تتبعوا سبب فتفرق بكم عن سبيله أحبت في الله أن حديث عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه قال 
He said the Prophet وسلم, drew a line in the sand. And he uh, and then he said, This is the Sabila law. This is the, the path of Allah, because it's a straight path. The path of Salaf Asari, the Sabila Mu'minin, is a straight path. And it's not compromised. And it comes from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. And then he said, Thumma Khatta Khutukin an Yamini. Then he made one on the right, and he made one on the left. And then he said, Those are the various paths that are divided. He said, and at, every, at the head of every one of those paths is a shaitan who calls to it. Who are the shaitan? That's Ahlul Bid'ah. Those and Ahlul Bid'ah and Ahlul Kufr. They call away from the book, the Sunnah, and the Sabil al Mu'minin, which is the Sabil al Salaf al Saleh. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, alhamdulillah, he he read. The ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And verily, this is my straight path. Then follow it. And do not follow the various paths and divide from my path. Subhanallah. And divide from the path. So this shows us that it is wajib. It's an obligation upon us. Because there's a, 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 a wa'id. There's a severe punishment for the one who uh, goes away from the path of the Salaf al-Saleh. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, if tarakat al-Yahud ila akhra hadith, and he said that those kullaha finnal al wahida they're all in the fire except one. And then that's when they asked, who are they? He said, those who are, basically, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. Radiyallahu ta'ala anu majma'in. Were the companions ashari? Were the parents, companions known as uh, Naqshabandi? Were they known to be Diobandi? No. They were the Salaf of this Ummah. They were the Ru'us of the Salaf of this Ummah. They were the head of the Salaf of Saleh. Ridwanallahi alayhim. Why is it that the Diobandis and uh, um, some of the other sects, these contemporary groups, why is it they say they are uh, Hanafi, and then on top of that, they blind follow the madhab of Imam Abu Hanifa, supposedly in fiqh, and they falsely make names on the YouTube as Hanafi fiqh channel, and Hanafi this, and Hanafi that. But instead of Hanafi, why don't they call themselves followers of Umar bin al-Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala or why don't they say they are followers of Abu Bakr, or Umar, or uh, Uthman, or Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhu mijma'in? Why aren't they blind followers of them? What did Imam Abu Hanifa say with regards to the Haq? Imam Abu Hanifa himself was not a blind follower like that. And he did not wish for people to blind follow him. What is the famous ather on Imam Abu Hanifa? He said... Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, The insaha hadith fuhuwa madhabi. If a hadith is shown to be sound, then that's my madhab. That's, that's, that's what I follow. You know, and if you find one of my aqwal, one of my statements which goes against the Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, an authentic hadith, then throw my statement against the wall. Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah ta'ala, qal, Ejma al-Muslimun ala anna man istibana lahu sunna an Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lam yuhillahu an yad'aha likul ahad. Imam Shafi'i said, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that the Muslims are united. They have consensus that whoever it becomes clear for him, the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then it is not permissible for him to leave, uh, to leave it for the statement of anyone else. This is why we are against uh, blind following. Blind following, taqlid, meaning to take someone else as a hujjah, to take a person and their statements as dalil. But no, dalil is from the Quran, the sunnah, of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and al-ijma' ijma' of the Salaf what they were united upon in Messiah 
of ittiqad or masail of uh, fiqh or whatever the case may be. That's what dalil is. We don't say our imam so and so and that's dalil. La. The hujjah is the book in the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it's not permissible to blind follow uh, a particular madhab in anything if the sunnah becomes clear to you. Qali Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala man abtada'a fil islam bid'atin yaraha hasanan faqad za'ama anna muhammadin khana risala Imam Malik, Imam Daru Hijra rahmatullah alayhi rahmatin wasi'ah he said whoever innovates in Islam a bid'ah, a innovation and he believes that it is hasana that it's good that there's a good innovation then he has declared that Muhammad or he is claiming that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has distorted or been deceptive with the message how is that? because the implication is if you have to make a new uh, turq a new tariq, you have to make bay'ah to the imam of the Naqshbandi turq such and such or you need to be tijaniya or you need to be some other sectarian uh, group and you need to make bay'ah to their imam is as if you are saying that what the sunnah calls you to is not sufficient this is the implication this is what is implied from your actions of bid'ah and from your statements of bid'ah and from your ittiqad of bid'ah this is what is implied. So make toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you find this these attributes amongst yourself or your clique or your hizb. For the sake of being precise, it's very important for us to understand the difference in istidlal. And this is where a lot of our differences are. Uh, emanate from when it comes to the Diobandi, Naqshbandi, and all those Sufi, Turk, that mix uh, Ashari Aqidah and Maturidiya Aqidah, where we differ, where Ahl Sunnah and the Salaf Asaleh and the Salaf uh, and the Salafiyun in contemporary times, where we differ from these uh, sects is predominantly in a few different ways. One of the ways in which we differ, which is very important for us to understand, and this is the, this is the uh, from the menhaj of the Salaf, Salaf Asari, and especially the menhaj of the Salaf in Aqidah, and how they understand creed. The first principle, it has to do with the Master Talaki, which means the origin or where Ahl Sunnah takes their creed from. Where do Salafis take their creed from? They take their creed from, as we mentioned prior to this, from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. That that is the Master of Talaki, uh, Talaki al -ilm. How do we get this, our knowledge? We go back to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we believe that it's Kamil, that the Deen is completed. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Yawm akmalta lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa radaytu lakum islam adina. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem that this day I've perfected my religion, I've, uh, I've perfect, perfected my religion and completed my favor upon you. So letting us know that the religion is perfect. So Ahl Sunnah, they hold that as a, a qaida, as a, as a principle, that the religion is complete and that those are the sources of wahi and revelation in the religion, the book and the sunnah. That we don't need to go to the statements of so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so for the origin of the religion. But rather, as the Salaf used to say, لا يُعَثْ الْحَقْ بِرِجَالُ وَلَكِنْ يُعَثْ الْرِجَالُ بِالْحَقْ That we don't know the truth by men. So we can't say we know the truth by Abba Mansur. Uh, uh, Abu Mansur or Maturidi or Maturidi or we can't say we know the Haq by Abu Hassan al, uh, al Ashari we don't look to them and say oh that's the truth but rather we look to them to judge are they in accordance with the Haq we judge them on the scale of the Haq not we judge the Haq on the scale of men and that's a very important the principle of Ahl Sunnah, and that's one of the ways we differ with those uh, other sects and groups. Another way in which we differ 
another important principle is that Ahl Sunnah, again, they believe the religion is completed, so they don't go to and don't hold Ahl Kalam and philosophy with high regard and respect. That rather they go back to the Book of Allah and the Son of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whereas those other groups, they are a part of Ahl Kalam. They are uh, adherents to Kalam and philosophy and using the intellect to define principles and even issues in Aqidah, in the, in the creed, with regards to the religion. And this is why they have a problem with, for example, ayats where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar-Rahman ar ars istawa that Ar-Rahman, he rolls above his throne. They have a problem with that because they use their intellect. They say, hey, if you say that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rises, then that means you're making a similar similitude between him and the creation. Ahl al-Sunnah says, la, we go by the qa'idah, laysa kamithlihi shay wa huwa sam'in basir. There is nothing like him, and he is the all-hearing and all-seeing. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates that anything resembles him. And at the same time, he affirms that he has divine attributes and sifat. Like hearing and seeing. Well, you and I have hearing and seeing. But our hearing and seeing is unlike Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's. So I hope that's clear. That is an important qa'ida uh, of ahl sunnati with jama'ah, where we differ with those groups. Those groups say, no, we have to change and make ta'wil and look for another meaning of those verses. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yanzulu rabbuna tabarak wa ta'ala kulu thulut al-layl al-akhir fa yaqul. The Prophet sallallahu said in Sahih Muslim, I believe it is a hadith, where he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Our Lord descends uh, every last third of the night to the lowest heaven. Abu Sunnah says, yes, Allah descends to the lowest, uh, the last third of the night to the lowest heaven in a way, in a manner that suits his majesty. We don't know how. Bila cave. And you don't have to bust your brain to try to figure out how. That's out of our capacity. We leave the how to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we believe and we don't negate that nasus because it goes against our intellect. Where you'll find from Ahl Kalam, some of them will either negate it totally and reject it as a hadith, and or another group will say, no, it is. Uh, it just means this. It means his mercy descends, uh, or they'll say his power descends, or some other ta'wil. They have to make ta'wil because they feel uncomfortable. But it's not about our feelings, and it's not about our our comfort. But it's about taslim and asus, and this is an issue of methodology. Al Sunnah is more literal. Then those people, those people tend to be uh, metaphorical in their understanding, which is a dangerous path because it can lead you far astray and destroy the kawaid and the principles of the religion and the understanding of the religion. Uh, another, uh, so this is important. That's why Ahl Sunnah rejects very strongly uh, Kalam, Ahl Kalam, and those great Imams, they spoke very strongly against uh, Ahl Kalam, Imam, uh, Imam Shafi'i, uh, Imam Malik, and Imam, uh, uh, Imam Ahmed especially. They spoke strongly because the Ahl Kalam had appeared during their time, and they warned sternly against it. And this is not the time for me to bring those many countless narrations that I could bring, but I just want to give us, for the sake of time, a very... Uh, brief understanding of our differences. Those are some of the key and core differences between Ahl Sunnah and other groups that, uh, for example, we said the Diobandi and we said the Ashiris and the Maturidiya. And they all have their own distinguishing characteristics. Those groups are not all the same. And some of them have greater innovations than others, more deviance than others. And as we mentioned prior to this, the Ashadis are closest to us. They're closer to Ahl Sunnah. But it's just that they make ta'wil in those sifat. But in the more contemporary Ashadis, they've combined their beliefs and their aqidah with a lot of Sufism as well. So I ask you, how is it we consider, for example, the Diobandiya to be from Ahl Sunnah? 
And how is it that we can possibly argue, or someone can argue, that they follow the Salaf? As we all can agree that the Salaf has the best methodology, had the best creed. As the Prophet ﷺ said, خَيْرًا نَسْقَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ The best people is of my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. But the Diobundis, they were a sect that began in 1867 at a town in the name of, uh, as, uh, that was called, uh, that is called Diobund in India. And the founder was a man by the name of Muhammad Qasim Nanatawi, or Nanat, Nanatwi. And some of the other founders of the sect of Diobundi, uh, Rashid Ahmed Ganguhi and Haji Imadullah. And they are known as some of the uh, famous uh, founders of this creed, of this sect. So how is it, Ayyua Diobundiun, those people who follow this, this path, how is it that you could possibly follow something that's just a contemporary group? What makes you differ from the uh, Ismailis and the Aga Khaniyas and all these other groups, some of these groups that were founded by the British? How is it? Why not go back to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah and measure your beliefs there? And you'll find that without your ta'wil fasid, you'll find you'll have many mukhalifat, many differences from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how the Salaf al how they understood religion. And they understood religion by the Vahir. They looked at the Nasus predominantly with uh, literalism. No matter how much you're afraid of it, but those texts, those the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we take it literalism. But however, we say that those uh, the kafia is left to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's in a manner that suits his majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't make a likeness between him and his creation, but we say what Allah says. We affirm what Allah affirms, we negate what Allah negates. We say what the Prophet ﷺ said, and we negate what the Prophet ﷺ negated. But the Diobundis, rather, they have many groups from them. Jamaat Tabliq, Sab'i Sahaba, Hayati Diobundi, and many, many other Hukchar Yar, the Taliban, Jaysh Muhammad, all kind of groups that are Diobundi in their usul, in their foundation. And it's very important, some of the issues in which we differ. For example, being Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, we differ with the Diobundis. The Diobundis, they believe in the concept of Wahdat al Wujud. I don't know if all Diobundis believe in this, because this is a belief of Kufr, plain and simple. This is the unity of Allah's existence Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everywhere. How is it you can say that about Al-Rahman? How is it you can say that about Al-Alim? That he is everywhere. So that means when you go to the hammam, the bathroom, at Karamakam Allah, you're saying according to your creed, even if you try to deny that and wiggle out of it, you're claiming in essence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even in the, those filthy places. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ وَهَذَا كُفْرٍ And that's disbelief. Diobundis also believe in the creation of Mushkil uh, Kusha, which is a term, it's a Persian and uh, Urdu word translated as remover of all difficulties. Uh, Diobundis also acknowledge and accept, and it probably depends on their level of, of, of deviance, grave worshipping. So they don't make Ankara. If you look at Jamaat Tabliq, for, for instance, Jamaat Tabliq is a movement, but their usul is Diobundi. Their foundation is Diobundi. If you look to Jamaat Tabliq, as our Sheikh Sheikh Mukbil said, and as many of us as witness, you'll see the most ignorant of the people making bayan. A new Muslim will come up, or people who have been making khuruj for 20 years who doesn't know anything about Tawheed. He just knows that Allah is the Creator. That's all he knows, which even the Christians bear witness to that. Even the Yahoo, the Jews, bear witness to that. So you have some people who are deal Bundy and who claim to be uh, following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whose concept of Tawheed is just Rububiyyah, just the Lordship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. 
they reject that the worship alone should be devoted to Allah. And that's why they go to the graves and supplicate to the dead or supplicate to their grandfathers or sacrifice to the dead or sacrifice to their grandfathers with some sort of wicked ta'wil facet. And there are many, many concepts in where we differ with, for example, the Diobundis. They believe that it is wajib to uh, uh, blindly follow one of the four Imams. And this is, as we already mentioned, what those great Imams said, and that we are not ordered to make taqlid of anyone, especially in, in, in absolute terms, and especially if you have the ability to know the truth in a mas'ala, and it comes to you that what is being said is against a, a text, against an authentic text, against the Qur'an, or against the something from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is authentic, and you're still going to say no. But my Shaykh said, but brother, we follow this. And how many people have we discussed with this? And they say, but no brother, we don't take from contemporary scholars, we just follow this. We're giving you Dalil from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you say you follow some old scholar, why not follow the book of Allah and the son of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there are many, many uh, other issues uh, with regards to the Dio Bundy and we'll save that and it's sufficient for us and we'll, we'll even bring some quotes of some of their, some of their, uh, their scholars. For example, uh, in a famous book which refers they refer to a man Haji Imadullah who was, we said was one of the founders as Sheikh Al-Arab al ajam that he was the scholar the Sheikh of the, the Arabs and the foreigners and listen to the belief of the Diobundis in the same book a question in Persian language can be found the question is it has been narrated that someone has claimed the Mulvi Qasim Nanat, Nanatwi opposes the Aqidah of Watatul Wajud, the unity of existence, Allah being everywhere, and says that the adherent to the above Aqidah is a heretic and an infidel. So this was the question that was posed, and it was about one of the other founders. So Haji Imadullah uh, 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 gave the following answer. He said the concept of Watatul Wajud is correct and the truth, regarding which there is not an element of doubt. Fakir, wa mashaykh fakir, and all of those who have taken allegiance, a Sufi bay'ah, from the fakir, every single one of them believe this. Mulvi Qasim Sahib, who is deceased, Mulvi Rashid Ahmed Sahib, Mulvi Muhammad Yaqub Sahib, Mulvi Ahmed Hassan Sahib, are these, uh, are, are this fakir's dear ones. They have ties with the faqir and have never opposed the beliefs of this faqir and have never opposed the mashrabi, mashayikh and will not conduct a path course of their own. So it lets us know, the blind following the taqlid. And worse than that is taqlid in an innovated and wicked aqidah which is based on kufr. And there are countless uh, texts from them which affirm their deviance. And it is very important to be knowledgeable about that, especially those people who follow that creed. It is very important for us to have a good understanding of this. Uh, one of their, uh, their, their uh, scholars, he said, Molana Khalil Ahmed Sahran, Sahran Puri further said, in Aqidah we fo follow Abu Hassan al-Ashari and Abu Mansur al-Maturidi. And in the Tariqah of the Sufiyah we follow the Naqshbandiya, Chesh Cheshtiyah, Qadariya, and si uh, Sihawardiya. Uh, there are many similar statements from other Diobandi scholars affirming, also affirming this. Also see Ulama Diobandi Ka Maslak of Qari Muhammad Tayyib and Fatwa Rahimiya of Mufti Lajpuri Tariq Dawat Wal Azimat of Mawlana Abu Hassan Ali Nadwi and there's many other books which illustrate the deviance 
of the Akhida of the Naqsh uh, of the um, of the Diobandia. They follow the Ashadis and aspects of their Akhida, but Abu Mansur, Maturidia. What about the belief of uh, Imam Abu Hanifa? His uh, belief, Imam Abu Hanifa was uh, one of the great Imams of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. Let's look at just one of the mukhalifat of this of these sects. And this has to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes. For example, we mentioned Al Istawa. Mawlana Ashraf Ali Than Thanwi said in an explanation of the verse Ar Rahman al Ars Istawa, he says, This verse is an evidence that Allah is not in a particular direction. Rather, everywhere is, is the implication. In Tafsir al Bayan, page 36. And Mawlana Shabir Ahmed Uthmani, the author of Fat al Mulhim Shar Sahih Muslim, also said the same in his notes to the Quran. Mawlana Hussein Ahmed Med Medani, another eminent Diobandi scholar, wrote in refutation of the Aqid of Ahl Sunnah, who he terms Wahhabiyyah, he said the Wahhabi group take a stoa literally and establish a direction for Allah from the verse, the most merciful rose over his throne, and other similar verses which necessitate a body for Allah. They don't necessitate a body because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rises in a manner that suits his majesty. That's the difference between Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Bidah. Ahl Bidah has to change the meaning to fit their intellect. But in fact, you're the one restricting the law. You're the one defining the law in a way that you have no right to do. And in this respect, what did Imam uh, Malik, I'm going to end with this statement of Imam Malik with regards to this issue of Estoa. He was asked in his halakha when he was teaching in uh, Medina. And he was asked, Ya Abu Abdillah, about Al Rahman Allah Estoa, he said, Kaiba Estoa. So he was asked, How did he Estoa? Imam Malik began to sweat profusely. He said, Al Estoa, Ma'lum, Wa Kaif, Majhu, Wa Sual Anhu, Bida. And then he kicked him out of his halaqa. And this is how the uh, Ma'tazila had said that they began because of his Iqtizal. This person began to have halakat of his own, if I'm recalling the, the, the full story correctly. The point is, is he was kicked out of his halaqa because Imam Malik, one of the great four Imams of fiqh and jurisprudence, and Aqidah to Ahl Sunnah, said that al istawa ma'noon because it's known in the Arabic language what istawa means it means to rise that's one of the meanings the meaning or irtifa uh, to raise you know it's known the meaning and we don't go outside the Arabic language al kayf al 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 we don't know how Imam Malik affirmed we don't know how but we believe he's showing the minaj of Ahl Sunnah is to take those nasus and believe the nasus believe the text and to ask about something like his bid'ah, because it's not going to benefit you in your ibadah. That's not going to help you come closer to Allah. None of those Messiah to know kafiyah, but rather what's going to help you in your ibadah is to have comfort and tukmatnina in your heart with the text. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم